I'm really looking forward to that party, right? So, <laughs> we get to the party though, and so a revelation happened for me when the pinata started. You ever been to a deal where there's a pinata in a party? Woo! And they take this six, seven year old little kid, it's a pretty crazy tradition, you Latinos, that we've all adopted, right? Woo! <laughs> and then you proceed to spin them into oblivion, and then you give them a bat. And you go, okay. and so you spin this little dude, and the pinata's over here, and he just starts swinging your body. You ever seen this? Missing everything. In fact, the people in closest proximity to him are in actual danger at this moment. You have to hurt the people closest to you. Then you finally get him after he's messed up, you kind of swear away. It's kind of like WFT, isn't it? And then you point out, see, in the beginning, we, you get recruited, we just spin your ass around. <laughs> Completely blindfolded, no idea what the hell you're doing. And you just start swinging away. No, no, you just swing and miss it. And if you stay, we finally grab you. Because no, no, it's over here, man. <laughs> Sounds like WT, doesn't it? Kids are pinata. You're making contact. And finally, the kids like, screw it, man. And what do you do? You get them a teammate. You take the, the blindfold off them. You get another little six, seven year old. You spin their butt around. They get it. They're blind. They're missing. You grab them. They come over. They're hitting the pinata. And now two of you have been hitting it. No candy comes out. That's WT. Then we get you another teammate. Blindfold their ass, spin them around. They start the people around them. Then. Right? Things get worse. Then you go, no, it's over here. But what's happening the whole time is this compound pounding is happening to the pinata. And even though it doesn't look like it, you're starting to break this bad boy up. It doesn't look like it, but it's getting looser and looser. Then you grab a fourth teammate, and a fifth teammate, and a sixth one. And eventually, Eventually, by the way, some of the original kids who were swinging the baton, they left the park. <laughs> but for the ones that stayed around, eventually that guy gets up there, boom! Candy everywhere. Yeah. And everybody jumps on the candy. Candy for everybody. That's the 10 year room at WFT. <laughs> because of the compound pounding on the WFG pinata. But most of you won't stick around to collect the candy. What you're watching is people up here who were just as blind as you, just as spun around, hurt some people around them just like you, were hitting it and there was no results. Got another, but what they did is they kept getting teammates until the compound pounding, even though it doesn't feel like progress, even though your team goes from 15 to 10 to five to 22, back to three, you make money, then you don't make money, that pinata is getting pounded off. And eventually, bam, and the celebration's amazing, and it looks like what you saw the other night. All I wish for you is that you'll keep pounding away. I learned the concept of compound pounding when I started in this business, and I'm living proof of it. I remember early on in the business, people saying, you're such an exaggerator. He's an exaggerator. He's always saying stuff in the future that's never going to happen. I remember telling the team, hey guys, someday, I know this sounds crazy, we're going to have a convention like this when our arena is half full in two conventions, two arenas at the same time. You create that, my lad. He exaggerates. Bam, look what we got. I remember, I, remember, I remember telling our team, hey guys, someday we're going to have bonus pools where you can actually override the entire company. They're like, where are you going to get this crap from, man? We're never going to have that. Guess what we got? Bonus pools where you can override the whole company. I told them, guess what, guys? Someday there's going to be like a TV show, a WFG person hosts. Like a show that every week that's like kind of like Oprah, but more business-like, didn't I, everybody? And millions of people are going to watch a WFG leader teach them how to live their lives better. And our whole company's going to transform in their credibility and the way the world looks at us. They're going to look at us like we're the shining star. That person will be one of the leaders in the world in business and life strategy. Oh, guess what happened? <laughs> Isn't that incredible? So if that can happen here, what can happen in your life? 
See, the thing you got to remember is that you really are one recruit away from changing your life. Your, your one decision, one thought, it sounds so hokey. But your one decision, your one thought. You know that stuff Swan put up with all those numbers the other day? Did y'all see all that? The party didn't tell you is that's John Fan and Penny Oy and Amy Newman and tons of different people hitting the pinata with him. That wasn't him. I didn't get up here with me. I got up here with my teammates all doing it together. And the difference is you gotta find your seven to 10 key people. The, the WFG business model, the separation, what you're looking for over your whole career here is seven to 10 key people. Can you write that down, please? All you've got to find is seven to 10 key people. In fact, we'll pay you a lot of money if you just find two or three key people. The whole business is predicated on you finding a small group of people, but it'll be a massive draft. It's going to take you a long time. It's not the first person or the eighth person, although it might be. But if you find those seven to 10 people, you will build something incredible with your life. It'll transform your family. And here's what I know. I don't love my children more than you love yours. Rich Foley loves Cindy, but he doesn't love her more than you love your wife. He just gets up there and talk about it all the time. <laughs> your wife deserves to win just like his wife. Your children deserve to win just like my children. Your precious babies are in the same company, with the same opportunity, with the same products. This is not about WFG. Ultimately, it's funny. The whole convention's about how incredible WFG is. It's this big monkey show. We're amazing. Look at this. The whole meeting, ironically, to this moment, it's looked like it was about WFG, and it never was. The whole time, it's been about you. It's been about you. It's been about your family. It's been about you being willing to step up and make something great happen for your family, to sacrifice for them, to do something extraordinary. Listen to me. You were born to do something great with your life. And it's, and it's by no coincidence that you found the WMG, that you stumbled in here, that right now you're getting those kind of feelings, man. You're feeling it, you want it, you're scared. That means it's you, it's you. You women in the room, I'm blown away by the ladies of WMG, the sacrifice, the commitment you made. And I want you to hear me on this, you are enough. You are enough right now. You're beautiful, you're special, you're favored, you're gifted. You were born to do something so great, set such an example for your family, to change your family forever. And you men in the room, you gotta step up, guys. You gotta be strong. You gotta fight for your family. This is a fight. Life does not give you what you dream for or hope for. Life gives you what you will pray for and fight for. And we need you fighting for your family. Say amen, yes? Yeah. There's something special about you. There's something anointed about you. It's not by mistake that you're here. You are not invisible to us. But you're gonna have to make the decision. There becomes a point in every person's life if they're gonna do something great. Mine was at that meeting. I was squeezing Christiana's hand. So never are we coming back here where we're invisible. They're gonna know our family, babe. They're gonna know who we are. When we have babies someday, they're gonna be proud of us. If we had this conversation in this room, that night, I watched more and more people leave and I stayed and I took it all in. It hurt me that no one knew us. It hurt me I was losing. It hurt me I wasn't fighting. It hurt me I wasn't competing enough. And I let that hurt change me. It's okay to feel a little pain. It's okay to get a little bit down. Because on the other side of that decision, if at some point in your life, you will listen, at some point in your life, if you will bow your back, man, ladies, if you'll just step into who you are. Just step into her. Just, just, it's a decision. You just start looking a little different, talking a little different. Rejection bounces off you a little different. You just step in and own who you are as a man or a woman. You make a decision. You plant your feet and you say, this is where I win or I don't win. But I'm gonna be in the 10 year room. I wanna get a look at that 10 year room. I wanna get a look at that 20 year room. I wanna travel the world with these people. I want my parents and grandparents and ancestors and my children and grandchildren to be proud of their mama, proud of their daddy, proud of their brother, proud of their sister. And I know this is the place that I can do it. 
My time is absolutely over for this convention, but I want to remind you, you are special. Do something great with your life. Keep hitting that pinata, and I will see you up here, and I will see you in the 10 years.